Hi, welcome to Hack Week. Curiosity made it to Mars. Yay! Way to go, NASA and JPL. And for all you people out there who complain about the money NASA spends, come on, get real. It's discovery. It's how we advance as humanity and not sit and be couch potatoes like you. Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about the Roomba robot this week because I built this robot based on those wheels. It's uh, a little like Curiosity, it just doesn't have the six wheels. That would be coming up sometime though. I want to build a six wheel robot just like that. And then I used the wheels on this other, whoa, little bot here. Remember this one? This was the, uh, the prop bot. Here is a Roomba 4000 series in a state of partially being torn down. And I kind of left it that way just basically as a way to show people what's in there because a lot of people ask about it. The motors are really neat. They're mounted on springs, but they come out real easy. There's all kinds of groovy sensors and things in here. And I did a video on this a couple of years ago on the Dino Fab site, which is kind of winding down now. And a few of the really cool videos over there, I'm going to move over to Hack Week. So this week, I'm going to share that with you here on Hack Week. I've re-edited it a little bit, uh, had a little bit of fun with the intro, which I think you might like. So um, it's a long one. Give yourself uh, about 20 minutes, uh, get comfortable, and enjoy the Room Before 4000 series teardown. Today, my buddy Nikita Tesla and I, Nikita, <laughs> what the hell's that? <laughs> okay, let's start again. Today, my buddy Nikola Tesla and I are going to tear down a Roomba Discovery series robot and stuff. <laughs> huh? I'm recording. Yeah, I'm recording right now. Okay. <laughs> I've started like three different times. <laughs> Made some serious screw ups. And that's alright, I'll keep them. Maybe I'll do a bloopers video. Today my buddy Nikola Tesla and I are going to do a complete teardown on an iRobot Roomba 4000 series. I'm going to be showing you what's inside this thing and how you can use it to make your own robot. There's lots of groovy components in here that we can play with, so let's get started. Okay, for starters we need to pull the covers off from this thing, and that has to be done in a specific order. You need to pull off sensor cover before you can pull off the main cover. So let's flip the device over and start taking some screws out. So we're going to take four screws out of this and we can set those aside in our little screw tray here as we go. It's kind of hard to get out of the holes so the easiest way unless you have a magnetic tip screwdriver is to just tip it over shake, all the screws will fall out. And the cover lifts off. And then we have a connector right in here that connects to the sensor for the docking station and for the virtual wall. We need to disconnect that so we can take the cover off and set it aside. Just give a tug on the plug and off it comes. Now that we have that out of the way, we'll be able to lift off the main cover. The main cover is held on with about uh, eight screws. There's two by the battery tray. There's two more down inside here by the brush mechanism. There's one in that corner, one in this corner. So we need to take those out. Then there's two more back here. Don't confuse it with these. These hold on a sub-assembly. It's the one on the very outside, right here and right here. Let's get those out of the way. And at this point, we can go ahead and pull off the dirt box that holds everything on. Let's flip it over and get these screws out of my way. Just push down on the button on the top and give it a slide. We'll set that aside and get it out of our way. The brushes and the holder, just push the two yellow tabs, lift that out. The brushes just lift right out, they're really easy. While we're at this point, I can show you the, uh, I'm pretty sure that this is the uh, dirt detector. I haven't actually verified that yet, 
but it's just a little sensor that picks up on particulates flying past the uh, the brush. And then once it does that, the Roomba circles around because it's thinking that there's dirt there and it needs to clean everything a little bit better. Okay, so we've got those screws removed. There's two more to go. One of them is here by the wheel on this side. The other one is over here, right in there. And that's the last two that hold down the top cover. So let's get those out of there. Okay, this should be all of our screws. I think there's, uh, yeah, let's see, two, four, six, eight. Eight screws total. And the cover lifts off by the front. There's a few little clips you'll hear release. Just give it a good tug, it'll pop off. And there's also a connector for all of these switches on the top that needs to be disconnected at the motherboard, right there. Let's just give that a pull. That's out of our way, we'll set the cover aside. It's pretty common to open these up and find all kinds of crud inside. This one's covered with mostly lots of dust. As you can see, looks like it's been roving around on the moon. Uh, just basically someone's house. But I have taken these apart and found virtually an entire carpet in here. There's places and little pockets where this kind of stuff can build up. Uh, not a good idea to be breathing this, so you might want to take it outside and blast it all off with some compressed air if you don't have that. Just a simple old paintbrush does a pretty good job brushing things out of the way. But, like I say, you may want to do this outside. Okay, we've got everything cleaned up here now, so let's go ahead and start pulling stuff apart. Some of these units have hot glue all over the place that holds the uh, wire harness in position. Some of them don't. The ones that have the hot glue are kind of a bit of a pain to take all the wiring apart. You have to be careful because it's pretty tenacious stuff, but be patient with it all and, and you'll get it all apart. So this whole front piece is kind of connected in with the motherboard in that the sensor pokes right into it there. This is an infrared uh, transmitter and receiver and this bumps up against a wall and interrupts the beam and that's what triggers it to sense that it's bumped into something there or on the other side bumped in there. On the rest of this sensor bar in the front are four uh, edge sensors and those are located in these recesses. Again it's a infrared transmitter and receiver. It, uh, sends a signal down to the floor, bounces back up, and if there's no floor there, then the thing backs up and moves away. So let's start taking some of this stuff apart. The first thing you want to do is get the front bar and the motherboard out of the way. So the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and just grab this harness here that has all of the umbilicals that run to the front and just start pulling these plugs out. And they only go back in in one position, so later on it's pretty easy to figure out where everything went on the motherboard if you want to do some hacking and actually utilize these sensors. Because you can power up the motherboard and use some of the stuff that's on it. In fact, I'll show you in a while. That's exactly what I did to run the motors on the Urban Rover bot that I built. So now we've got those wires pulled off. We'll get them pulled up, get the hot glue things out of the way here. And there's two screws here that are the pivot points for this front end. Let's take those out. Put those aside in our little screw container. Most of this stuff comes apart with just a couple of screwdrivers. You might need a number one and number two Phillips. Let's pull these springs off and get those out of the way. These are really nice to save too. I mean, they're just good springs to use, right? Save everything. It's all worth saving. Recycle stuff. Go find electronics, tear it apart, and uh, save some money and keep stuff out of the landfill at the same time. Kind of cool. There's a couple more screws on the ends here that hold on these little plastic things that do more than just hold the motherboard in. It's kind of a multi-purpose piece of stuff there. Um, you can see this one's got a spring attached to it that tensions the motor makes it swing towards the floor. So let's get those out of the way. You need a smaller screwdriver for these screws. Now once those are out of there, the motherboard will lift out. So there's more plugs to disconnect. Let's get those pulled off. These are the ones that run to the motors. 
They have wheel sensor wires and the uh, power wires going to them. The wheel sensors get dirty in these things. We'll show that later too. I'll take a motor apart before the end of this video and you'll see what's going on inside there. Okay, we've got just about everything pulled off here. There's a small ground wire to get out of the way. Now we can start lifting out the motherboard and the sensor bar kind of all at the same time. It'll all kind of sort of fall apart away from the thing. The easiest way to get these out is push in and then lift it out of the sensor. And then it's separate from everything else. There is a couple of sensors here that are wired in. Get those out of the way. There's the sensor bar. whole thing right there. You can kind of keep that intact. You can... Uh, hack that later if you want. Utilize these edge sensors in another robot. So we'll keep all that stuff. There's a micro switch on this wheel in the front so that when the thing gets picked up off the floor that little micro switch right in there gets triggered and turns off the mechanism so the motors don't run, the brushes stop running. There's a few switches in here that do that. There's a couple back here by the motors. There's those little turquoise colored switches. <clears throat> now the motherboard comes out, and there is a cord that runs all the way back here to the serial port. And iRobot put a serial port in there to be able to upload firmware to the uh, processor. It's a Motorola processor, and I've been told by someone that used to work at Roomba, at iRobot, that... Uh, it is possible to get in there and, and use that thing, but it's, um, you mentioned something about it's an, an encrypted type of upload or whatever. Didn't quite catch all that in the email, but basically what it means is it's a little difficult to use that processor yourself. He said you could get a processor from a few places like maybe SparkFun or a programmer that would connect to it. Uh, it would cost probably $100 or more. But what I like to do is just use the motherboard and connect an Arduino to it. Uh, now these are the H bridges that run the motors. It's four power transistors each, and then they are triggered by smaller transistors on the board. I have another motherboard here that I had in the Urban Rover Bot. Now this one has the wires connected to it for the uh, Arduino to be connected to. Let's see if I can get in close here. How good's my autofocus? There we go. You can see where they're connected to those two surface mount transistors. And those are the transistors that trigger these transistors. And it either switches on the ones that give it a positive voltage or a negative voltage. That's what makes the motors go forwards and backwards. So the motherboard, we'll set that aside and keep that. Now let's go ahead and focus on taking one of these motors out so I can show you what's inside those. Um, we'll start with this one I guess because it's just right here in my hands. Um, again there's some hot glue and things to pull up off from the chassis to get the wires free. And once we do that there's two screws buried down in here. One's right there and the other one is right there. Those two screws have to come out and they will release this little piece on the bottom that captures this part of the motor and allows it to pivot and also keeps it attached to the chassis. So it's just two screws to take that out of there. I still have a little bit of stuff hanging out in here. Didn't quite get it all out. Like I said, there's lots of recesses where that stuff can hide. And uh, sometimes I can really screw things up on some of the uh, parts of the room, but it'll make things not work properly, especially in the wheel sensors. Now we have the motor just about out of here. There we go. Let's put this aside. Let's get all this nastiness out of the way. Okay, so here's a motor assembly. And uh, you can hear the gears in there. I'm going to go ahead and take this apart for you so you can see what's inside. Let's get this side off first, and you can see the drive belt. Just four screws to hold this cover on. <clears throat> They're short screws, so don't mix these up if you're doing some work on taking anything apart for any reason to clean stuff. Keep them aside because they need to be the short screws. 
otherwise they go through too far. And this cover comes off and there's the drive belt and the wheel sensor or the uh, right there is a small infrared device another transmitter and receiver and as these wheels go by it breaks the beam or not it bounces back and then the thing can keep track of how many wheel rotations are going on um, but I guess they're not that accurate because of the belt the belt makes things slip a bit and so therefore you end up getting a little bit extra stuff added in all the time that isn't really there as if it traveled some distance and it didn't I'm just gonna put one screw back in there now to hold that in place while I flip this over and show you the other side there's two screws that hold this on there's one there one down in this recessed thing so you'll need the smaller screwdriver for that loosen these two up and there's a small clip right here that has to come loose that's easy enough there's some crud well, there's also a little cap that goes on top of the axle of this thing right there it's important that you keep that because it drops on there and the cover goes back on and holds everything in place let's put that aside and we'll take these three small screws off that hold the wheel on These wheels are really robust. They're very squishy. They look like they're going to hold up really well for all kinds of uses. You can see the stuff that builds up in here. This is the stuff that raises havoc with the uh, the Roomba sensors and whatnot. Sometimes it can seize a wheel up. There are overcurrent resistors, I was told, on board to prevent anything from burning out if the wheel does seize up. So, yuck. Put that aside. <clears throat> now here's the inside and all the carpet, dog hair, whatever. I don't have no idea where this uh, this Roomba's been. I don't want to know. That's nasty. Let's get that aside too. And inside here, there's always stuff built up. Also, get this out. Don't breathe it. <laughs> okay, that's out of the way. Now inside here is the gear reduction box. It's a wonderful little planetary gear system and uh, we'll pull off these four screws now and I can show you what that looks like. You have to be kind of careful when you lift this cover off and it's best to have the cover on the other side because everything kind of gets loose and wants to fall back through if you don't. Um, it wouldn't be impossible to put everything back together but anytime you're taking these things apart just kind of go slow watch carefully as you lift off covers where gears go because sometimes things tend to fly apart and it can be a little difficult to discern exactly where they go again so here we go I'll lift this off and push down in this center section to keep everything from coming with it look at that isn't that nice there's the uh, outside stationary gear and the planetary gears and I'm not sure what the gear reduction is on this I could probably figure that out maybe talk to my friend that used to work for iRobot he might be able to tell me so I'm going to leave that apart because I'm going to clean it up before I put it back together I do plan on using this in a, another robot so let me put that over here now, what else is there on this thing that we can use? There's uh, quite a few little goodies. There's a, there's a motor here that's the little brush that spins the dirt into the bigger brushes. That's got a nice little gear reduction box on it, so that could be fun to use. A couple of those could actually be drive wheels for a robot if you repurposed what goes on here. Um, you know, this little brush thing, do whatever you want with it. You can mount this on top of a robot and just let it spin around because it would look goofy. This little wheel could be used on a three-wheel robot as the, uh, the trailing wheel. The battery box is very valuable, and it can also be kept intact and plugged back into the motherboard, and then you can still use the charging uh, monitoring circuit on the motherboard to charge up the battery in your robot. This is one I cut out 
and had mounted in my prototype urban ro rover bot. There's also the dirt sensors on here. I'm actually not quite sure how those work. I need to do a little more research on it. They kind of look like piezoelectric sensors, don't they? But I'm not that sure. In the back, there's a little box here where things are all kind of in housed inside something. I need to open one of those up at some point and uh, dig around in there. I guess I could just do that right now. Take one of these covers off and see what's what's inside. I haven't done that yet, so this is a revelation to uh, both of us here in this moment. I'll put my screws aside for my motor so I don't lose those. Okay, what's underneath there? Well, look at that. There is an entire circuit supporting that thing. So yeah, I'm assuming that that's uh, some kind of piezoelectric sensor. It probably picks up um, dirt hitting against it and then it creates voltages and these two little controllers on board send signals to the motherboard that there's dirt present. And the little blue light comes on and then the thing goes into a subroutine where it spins around in circles and cleans up that spot a little better than anything else. These micro switches are really handy. There's, uh, like I said, there's three, I think, on board. And there's uh, a close-up of one of them right there. They're really robust little micro switches. Those could be used for bump sensors on a robot somewhere. There's a lot of wiring in here that you can put to use. Uh, some of these little pins can connect into other things, other uh, microcontrollers and whatnot, onto breadboards really easily. So that's all worth saving too. Don't throw any of this stuff out, it's all good. And the speaker is over here for all the little sounds that the Roomba makes. That's kind of a handy little thing to keep as well. And that's about it uh, as far as the teardown goes. There's the drive motor here that runs the brushes and um, there's a small gear reduction box in there. There's also gears inside here that get all messed up and can cause problems with the Roomba not picking up dirt. So, there you go. There's a, uh, a Roomba Discovery teardown. Have fun tearing apart your Roombas.